All right, guys, we got to talk. Last video, we installed our new ignition cylinder there. Or did we? Because the reality is the dormant part I got wound up fucking having a defect right from the factory. The tumblers got messed up, it didn't work, so I sent that back, got a refund. Even though that video I did show you how to do it properly, if it was to actually work. But, funny enough, now the Jeep with the old one in there, pretty much just working every time. Occasionally it still gets stuck. Cheap things for you. But, what we're gonna do is install this nice little cheap $40 push button start. Because that sounds fun. Let's make the Jeep modern. We'll have that in there and then we won't have to worry about this jamming anymore. So today I'm going to show you how to install one of those. Super easy actually, if you know basic wiring. Uh, yeah. I just need to say that when you're installing this on this vehicle and most vehicles specifically, you have to bypass your wheel lock and your shifter lock. How it won't let you put it in to drive if the key is not turned and the easiest way around that is when we removed our ignition cylinder there you have to turn it to run to pull it out and doing that pulling it out it's it's removed right now so i'll show you you can click this you can move the car into gear and the wheel i'm not gonna spin it because it's on the ground but it's not gonna lock on you so if you really care about having those things, you'll have to think of a way around it. I'm sure you could do it with this one here. It's mechanical normally, but you could probably set up a relay with a little motor that, you know, when you power on the switch, it pulls it back. I don't really care that much. I don't have any children, nothing like that. No one else is getting in this car that would be stupid enough to just like put it into drive without, you know, I feel pretty confident. that the teenagers on mopeds around here are fucking annoying. I feel pretty confident that I'm not gonna have any issues with that, but if that's something you're worried about, that's something you wanna keep in terms of security, then this might not be the thing to do for you. But for me, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna have my extra security anyway, kill switch, things like this, separate keys. So like, I'm not too worried about that being my only means of stopping someone from taking it, you know what I mean? So just something to keep in mind. So what you're gonna need for that is just like we did with our ignition cylinder here, you have to take off the same panels. So grab yourself just a normal screwdriver and take all that out. Once we get to it, you're gonna need basic, you know, wire crimpers, strippers, get your bolt meters, get yourself some of these. It'd be uh, best if you have some of those ones that you can just like hijack a wire on it, just clip right over it and I'll show you exactly what comes with this and how it goes together. All right, take a screwdriver, two screws under here, screws in here, take it all off. Sometimes these don't come off with the thing, just make sure you keep them, slide them back on. Now once you get down here, we'll take this off so you can get access to our wires under here and then we'll pull up our wiring diagram which will show you there's basically like six wires that you have to attach and then you attach to the foot brake and then pretty simple now with these ones it helps to just like spin it way more than you think it actually needs to to come out because they're pretty long screws and it's easier if you can just do it while you have the pressure on it because as soon as you let go it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it back on the head of the screw so just keep spinning. That seems good. And oh, there it goes. We'll find that later. Now that we've got everything in here open, I'll kind of show you. Your ignition cylinder is right here. You follow this back, which has the ignition switch, I guess we call it. And then these are the wires here that attach. So just follow it straight back. Boom. So these are ignition wires. These are the wires for your clock spring and up in the wheel. So ignore those. These are the ones you need. And it has a clip here. So you can pretty much just push back on this and pull these wires out. There we go. So go ahead and remove that clip. Oh, I guess there's another one here. Remove these wires and we'll have access to those and we'll pull up our diagram. We'll test these with power, I think. You know, we'll make sure they're the right ones. 
just gonna show you a little overview of what we're going on here so this is the view with everything off you've got this for all the wires you're gonna need are right here for the main stuff plus you need your brake switch so you look straight back here where your brake pedal is and you've got this little box here above it and there's a long cable running here it goes up and over towards it so you're gonna unplug this um, use a long flat screwdriver like this you can just get in there and slowly turn it like that and it'll pop up there's no real button to push on you just kind of pop it up and out once that's out pull it forwards there is a white and tan wire on it which I just tested with my test light here you can see in the back there that's the ground that I used use your test light and you just kind of come up it's easier if you take it fully out but you can touch it on the very back wire which is like blue and pink it's constant power and the wire over just gets power when you push on this that's what you need in order for the push start to work so that it starts the car when you push this and the button so that's where that switch is you're gonna attach onto that wire and the rest on here now let me show you everything that's in our kit so this is the push button start kit here easy guard forty dollars on amazon got your instructions here which actually does have a pretty nice diagram for everything here so it tells you on your main harness what the wires are and what they do and it gives you notes for depending on the type of vehicle if it's newer if it's older if it's older it's easier basically um the colors on the main harness here in the kit don't like all match with this so make sure you check um, it's not like putting in a radio where it's pretty much matching the colors up. This one, they do have different purposes, so make sure you put the right one where it goes. Huh. That's the instruction manual there. That's it. Super easy. Comes with the, you know, business card. So you got your main harness here. You've got this ring here, which is what you're going to hide somewhere. And this is what you will scan with your ID keys, which are right now just attached to the main this is your main hub. These are your keys that come with it. So when you get in the car, you swipe these on the ring. That will turn off your kind of alarm or lock. And then from there, you can use the push button to start the car. And it also comes with this nice card. So you can swipe the card or the tags. And this set of wires here is what you're gonna attach to your brake switch. And it's really just that simple. So you've got one, two, three, four slots here. Attach those up and hook it up to your wires. And then I guess one of the harder parts of this whole thing is figuring out where you're gonna hide this box because optimal, you don't want it to just be like right here. If someone does manage to get in your car, rip this all down, they can pretty much just unplug this and like everything to hotwire your car would be right there which is why i'm also planning on putting some safety screws or something of a locking screw on that metal plate here to keep that even harder to get in as well as wiring in a kill switch to our main relay with a hidden switch somewhere which i don't know i like having switches it's like starting up an airplane i don't mind having to go like click 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 start that feels cool to me but if you really hate that then whatever keep your your normal key but for added security, we're just gonna make it super goofy and try to find somewhere to hide this up in here. Behind the radio would be a good spot. Back tucked with the wires, try and just make it not obvious for someone to find how to put it all together. All right, so for the sake of simplicity, before we get into all the hard stuff, I've routed the easy things. So our circle scanner thing, I've routed it in here to where I want it to be. Got the wires run there. And let me get some light. All right, so you can see what's going on here. I've taken out our ignition cylinder, just like in the other video there. It's super simple on the bottom. There's a little button here. There's a button here, your key. Make sure it's not screwed enough that you can't turn it because you need to be able to put this on to the run position. Push this button here, this pops off. And then there is also a little plastic cap here that sits on it. Just pull that off because you won't need it anymore when it's on. And I'll show you here. 
a beautiful little push start button all installed. On the back of your button, there's just those four metal clips. Just bend those back and push this in, bend it out. And it actually installs pretty nice, pretty clean. Don't move around at all. It's in there nice and secure. So we'll be able to go ahead and uh, test fit this. Let's just see how that looks. So see, once that's all in together, that'll be there. Run start, push the button there. I'm just trying to see if that looks level so you can you know turn it boom make sure that's where you like it and that'll be our push to start button yeah so now for the less fun stuff so what i'm gonna do here now is go ahead and take out the brake light switch i mean easy one to start with we tested it we know which wire it is so we'll attach onto that one move on to the rest it's just one wire plugs right into our box can't go wrong right right just slowly pry on each end with your screwdriver boom there came out reach in pull it back towards you here we go on our specific kit to the smallest one here which is green and brown go to your diagram it says to attach to the brake wire um the green wire is connected with the foot brake. The brown wire, oh, there's another little diagram here too, which is nice, I'll show it in the video. Boom, nice movie magic if I can. To the foot brake, your green, green wire of this goes to the foot brake, brown one is nothing. You just leave it, make sure it doesn't touch anything that it's not supposed to, and plug this into our box. And I wanna try my best to route the wires nicely, so I'm really kinda Taking my time planning out how I want to do this. It's a lot of find the wire, stare at it for 10 minutes, and then move on type of shit, you know. Four of these, these are the wire ones I was talking about to just attach on. You can use those, It'll make your life a lot easier. Since I don't have too many of the wire hijackers, I just went ahead and stripped out a space here. And we're gonna just strip the end of this and wrap it around, you know, the old fashioned way. The way that I'm sure some of you might frown upon, the way it might upset a bunch of you, the way that I do not give a care, because I'll just fix it in the future if something happens. It really doesn't bug me all that much, honestly. And these are smaller wires anyway, so I don't think there's a lot of power going through it, or like a lot of chance of it coming off or anything. It should be perfectly fine. Been there, done that. So I'll just grab this, go around. Wrap that up nice and tight, and then I'm going to electrical tape this to the wire here, try and make it look nice and clean, run this over to our box, and then the next thing to do is just our main wires here. This is the one that I'm going to really try and do a lot of thinking about where to route it, so I show, I'll show you. So I have those diagrams that I showed you. Pull it back up here, maybe. Screenshot that. Use those. That's where you're going to attach your wires to. And then it's up to you where you want to hide them. I'm not going to show you where I hide my box, even if none of you know where I live. I'm just, you know, you'd be dumb to. Just like installing a kill switch, you don't want to show exactly where you put your switch into. So in terms of exactly how I run mine, you can figure it out for yourself. Just get creative with it. But um, make it hard for people to find. And if you don't want sloppy spaghetti in here, try and make it look clean. Wrap everything in electrical tape, kind of like it's done here from the factory. So it's uh, nice and sleek. Just quickly to show you here what we got done. So now that we've wrapped that all up in electrical tape, run it back. Here's our green wire, kind of here running along it. So what I've done here is run our wire down from our switch and I popped off this little plastic bit here, ran it behind there so it looks real nice. Now we're just gonna quickly take our test light that we have here, it's grounded, give it a quick check on positive. We know it works. And then we'll take our green wire here we should have no power when we don't push the brake and power when we push the brake. So here's the green one and nothing. Hopefully it's touching so this isn't embarrassing, but cool. That means it works. All right, so I'm just going to start wiring up our quick connections here. Basically taking these, wrapping it around the wire and crimping it on. These are honestly kind of a pain in the ass to work with, especially on thicker wires because you have to 
kind of get it around with one and then pinch it with the other for it to actually do its thing. But once you get it, it's great. It's like anything, once it's done, it's awesome, but you know, you gotta do it. Doing things sucks. And then you have these other ends here that you just slip on once you attach to your wire. So like that, we got the positive, and we'll take our red wire here. Okay, you'll strip it, plug it in here, boom, clip it on, and then it just slides on. I love that, it's amazing. Makes things super easy. Once you've gone ahead and uh, put all your connectors onto the wires you got, and you've got all your connectors on here, then you can go ahead and take these, plug them in, and then route it up to where your box is, and uh, give it a test. Maybe we'll test it before we actually tie it all up together and uh, see if it works. All right, y'all. This is sick. So, it works. That's awesome. So. Just to give you a little show here. So, everything is back together other than the panel up here. Uh, I just tested it without everything in to make sure it works and now we put it back in. Just to show you guys now before it's all done. So you take your key card, scan it over where you have your ring and then you can push one, normal power. So your radio comes on, two, full accessories. And now it's flashing ready to go. Make sure your car is in park and push on the brake. Stop it, just put your hand on the brake again, push the button. We're gonna push the start in a 99 Jeep Cherokee. How cool is that? Guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no. If you ask me, bring the guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no, no. That shit's too expensive.